So um, today we're talking appraisals and um, we have two experts, uh, Mr. Jeff Allen, our president and CEO, uh, president of Kubikasa, and also the EVP of Innovation Labs at Clear Capital. Um, Jeff has over 20 years of experience in real estate, MLS, mortgage and appraisal industries and is super well versed and I'm excited to hear uh, from Jeff today. And we also have John Brennan, who is the VP of um, Valuation Policy and Chief Appraiser at Clear Capital. Um, Jeff, uh, John has extensive experience as an appraiser, including over 16 years as Vice President um, Appraisal Issues at the Appraisal Foundation. So we are truly stoked to hear from Jeff and John. Um, there's a ton of information that we're going to present. Um, as I mentioned, we will do Q&A at the end. So if you have questions, please drop them in the chat and we'll try to get to everything. Um, we do have some incredible resources as well that we'll provide. Um, so Jeff and John, you guys want to jump in? Yeah, sounds great. Hi, everyone. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Um, I'll, I'll get us started. We're, we're not going to spend a ton of time, um, you know, digging into industry trends or talking specifically about, you know, any kind of sales pitch for Kuba Casa. You know, John and I thought that the best thing we could do here today is spend a little bit of time setting the stage for, <clears throat> you know, what are the major changes happening in the appraisal industry today uh, that have been happening in the past couple of years? And what does that mean going forward? But then really, we're going to spend a lot of time uh, digging into uh, very specific questions that we've been getting frequently from appraisers uh, about kind of uh, new digital GLA technology, desktop assignments, relying upon data from third parties in, in, your, um, in your appraisal assignments, and really just try to get to the meaty types of topics like that, that we know are of interest. So I'll spend a little bit of time setting the stage and then, and then we'll dig into some kind of prepared uh, common questions and some, some answers to those before, uh, as Mark mentioned, eventually at the end, we'll get to a live Q&A. So um, to talk a bit about uh, what is changing in our industry right now, um, there is a lot changing. Um, I would say that at this particular moment, the appraisal industry is going through you know, probably some of its biggest transformations that it has since um, really since UAD, um, you know, several years ago when there was a big shift to, to how appraisal data was delivered. So some recent milestones for us to kind of remember and think about as we think about those changes. First, 2019, you know, through ongoing today, um, uh, you know, the GSEs have been engaged uh, in testing and learning the concept of hybrid appraisals, where a property data collection is performed by a third party, um, you know, who, who is not the appraiser concluding the value. Um, and the, the GSEs have both been pretty open about this um, and, and sharing kind of their, you know, their roadmap for testing that, being thoughtful about reviewing the results of those tests and seeing like, is there legs to this long-term? You know, those pilots are still here. Um, they are growing uh, in volume and in popularity and may in the future become a, a standard offering. Um, you know, they're still in pilot, they're still in testing, but there's certainly a lot of experience um, that, you know, some lenders have, the GSEs have to say that, you know, this, this very well is likely viable going forward in the future. Um, then on top of that, we all are likely aware that just in this last month, uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac have now officially announced their support in the selling guide for uh, the 1004 desktop appraisal. Um, and the 104 desktop appraisal is a bit different from the hybrid um, in the sense that an appraiser can perform a value conclusion uh, without visiting the property due to their use of third party data sources. So other you know, elements of data they can find online, most often the MLS, uh, so long as they can access you know, a floor plan that has GLA calculations that they can use to ultimately evaluate and understand the property's uh, characteristics, uh, functional utility and things of that nature. So um, while the hybrid appraisal pilots and the desktop appraisal are a bit different in terms of how an appraiser interacts with data and what the appraiser's uh, role is, there's a lot of similarities um, between those two big changes that are underway. Um, and that's what we're kind of highlighting here in this, what does this all mean? Uh, these changes really all are similar in the sense that they are about empowering the appraiser to focus uh, more often on high level functions like market analysis and value conclusion. Uh, today in the traditional appraisal process, 
we ask the appraiser to do everything. Um, you know, they have to trudge through the hedges in 90 degree heat in Dallas to measure. They need to play phone tag with um, home occupants to try and schedule. They need to drive endless amounts on the roads. Um, and so the concept behind a lot of these changes is that might not be the highest and best use of an appraiser's time, pun intended. Um, John, I know you like a good appraisal joke. Do I get oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Nailed it. Um, <laughs> so uh, could we have our appraisers focusing on, you know, more the kind of the more hardcore parts of the job, which is the analysis, selecting comps, performing adjustments and determining value? John, anything you'd add about some of these changes that are ongoing and what it means for appraisers? Yeah, thanks, Jeff. I, I do want to say, and not necessarily about the specific changes, but more about change in general. Um, you know, a lot of us, a lot of people, a lot of appraisers, a lot of people in other professions and businesses um, don't like change. It, it, it's somewhat natural. You get comfortable and, you know, you do what you do. Um, but change is inevitable. And, and as we're talking about here, it is, it is certainly uh, impacting the lending and the real estate appraisal business. And what I, what I hope is, you know, two things. Number one, it's important to realize that with all these changes, nobody's pushing appraisers out. You know, there, these changes involve appraisers. Maybe not, to Jeff's point, doing some of the same tasks that you performed uh, previously in all of your appraisal assignments. Keep in mind, you know, there are still traditional full appraisal assignments. If you want to go out there and trudge through the snow or, or, or deal with rain and things like that, you certainly are going to be able to. But, you know, the, uh, you know I, I, I use the quote very many times when I talk, and that is, if you don't like change, you're going to like irrelevance even less. And the goal here is to keep appraisers relevant. So look at change in, in a positive way if you can and, and not stiff arm it saying, you know, I, I like things the way they are. I don't want anything to change because that's not a realistic view of the world. Uh, but instead, see where you can embrace change and possibly benefit from it. Fantastic. Yeah, thanks, John. And um, and I, as we kind of jump into the questions here, um, uh, a quick note about about Kubacasa. Again, we're we're not here to really sales pitch anybody on Kubacasa today. Though we will answer questions about Kubacasa and how it fits into this future. Um, you know, Kubacasa is a a technology that enables anybody with a smartphone uh, to perform a five to ten minute property walkthrough with their phone and have that produce an ANSI aligned floor plan with GLA calculations and property data. And the reason that, you know, this shift in the appraisal space uh, towards hybrids and desktops um, really kind of, um, you know, inspires Kubacasa is because we know that it's essential for appraisers to have access to really high quality property data and square footage information when they're performing these assignments. And the hardest thing to do if you're a non-appraiser third party collecting data is to get good square footage information, is to get reliable property data. So Kubacasa sees itself as hopefully helping to create a safer environment for appraisers in the future when third parties are collecting this data. That's how we see ourselves fitting into this movement. And so please think of our technology and, and our kind of angle on this today is how do we make that happen? How do we make the future safer, you know, for appraisers to do these assignments? Awesome. So, that was a great intro and great start. Um, so we we have queued up some common questions and um, some things that I think I know you guys will be able to um, address as we jump in. So um, I guess the first one here is how can I provide a credible appraisal report without having visited the property myself? Well, I, I love it. Ten minutes in and we've got a real use. <laughs> Fantastic. This gets my this gets my my juices going. So um, I think most most people that are watching and listening to this um, understand that USPAP does not require a personal inspection by an appraiser. There is nowhere in USPAP where you will see you have to perform a physical inspection of the property. You do have to disclose what your scope of work was and whether or not you performed an inspection and the extent of that inspection, et cetera. That is part of your normal scope of work and description. 
But the bottom line is USPAP is very broad and USPAP says you need to be able to perform a scope of work that produces credible assignment results. So who determines if, if that scope of work is appropriate? The appraiser. Not every assignment is created alike. Some will be very well suited for certain assignments, some will not. It's important for the appraiser to understand what their obligation is under USPAP, and that is to produce cr credible assignment results based on that scope of work. So it is absolutely 100% possible to perform a completely USPAP compliant appraisal without inspecting a property. Awesome. Thank you for that very thorough answer. I think, um, so Tammy, we lost her, so she's coming back. So I'll go in and um, ask the next question. Um, if the floor plan was scanned by an interested party, like the homeowner or a listing agent, can I rely on it in the appraisal report? John, you want me to take that one? Or do you want yeah, to? Yeah, why don't you go ahead? I might jump in. I guess we should have coordinated in advance who was going to answer this question. <laughs> we'll, we'll figure it out as we go. But um, so what's unique about you know, technologies that enable people to scan and produce a floor plan um, is ultimately it takes the, uh, the agency away from the person who does the scan from the impact on the final GLA calculation. Um, so essentially, uh, if a homeowner or a listing agent walks through a property with, a, with Kubo Casa or a technology like it and collects, you know, that scan, ultimately, the technology and the process is what's producing the final output, not the person performing the scan. Um, and so what is you know, unique then is we can rely upon those technologies in the appraisal process to provide credible and reliable data. You could not ask a listing agent to draw you a floor plan or tell you what the GLA was and rely upon that because they have agency and impact on the outcome. Um, and so uh, the, the GSEs have actually spoken to this in their FAQs around the desktop, uh, the desktop appraisal, and, and have specifically stated that, you know, technologies like Kubacasa, because they are removing the agency of, of the scanner, um, are essentially eliminating the interested party's impact, and they can be relied upon for those assignments. Um, there's a great Fannie Mae FAQ uh, that came out, uh, and Freddie Mac FAQ related to this, um, and we've got links to those here at the end of, end of the presentation. Um, John, anything you'd add to this that uh, you think is credible, uh, relevant to bring up? Just, just, a, just a, a quick summation of what you said, and that is that if an agent or a property owner were to perform a scan, they are, they are an interested party, but by performing the scan, they are not. The, scan, the technology is what the GSEs look at because of its security and the inability of an interested party to somehow impact the results. Awesome. Thank you guys again for another very thorough answer. Um, let's move on. Tammy, are you uh, back with us? Can you, can you hear me? Am I back with you there? Yes, ma'am. All right. Okay, so next question. Uh, how can an appraiser rely on information obtained from technology platforms? Well, uh, I'll, I'll jump in this first, Jeff, and if you want to add in. So, you know, Understand, it, it, and, and I can refer back to USPAP again, so I'm happy, uh, Standards Rule 1-2E in USPAP. Um, it talks about you know, appraisers being able to, uh, to obtain data from sources that they believe are reliable. So it's no different than your MLS, your assessor's data, your flood data, anything that you're looking at to use as a data point in your appraisal report, you as the appraiser have to determine that it is reliable. Um, if you have reason to doubt the reliability, then, then you have to look at alternative ways to perform a scope of work that will produce those credible assignment results. But when you talk about technology, I mean, there, there, are, you know, there are a lot of different technologies that we use as appraisers to obtain data and the bottom line is you have to have trust and reliability in that data to be able to use it in your appraisal and USPAP provides for that. Yep, you nailed it, John, uh, exactly. You know, it is not, well, I think many appraisers aren't used to the idea of a technology platform generating some of that information. 
there's nothing in USPAP that prevents it. Um, and, and it is something that, you know, we see is going to become more common into the future. So great response. All right, thank you. So I have concerns regarding property scan with an app to generate GLA, especially when it comes to liability. How can I ensure that information from third party service is reliable? You wanna take this one first, Jeff? Yeah, I'll start. Um, so I would say first and foremost, think of, um, think of the technology as an aid to the appraiser in the process. Uh, that is designed to give you another data source to utilize to determine what is the most credible set of data you're going to report on. Um, and ultimately, you know, because same way if you use a disto measure or some other solution to collect property data today, um, the responsibility and really the, the kind of, you know, uh, the freedom as well to the appraiser of being able to select what do I think is most credible in the final report is still there. Um, so simply because you utilize a new tool or a new technology to collect data doesn't really change kind of your freedom uh, within USPAP and your obligation within USPAP to ultimately conclude the appropriate data set that you want to have on the appraisal. John, I am not an appraiser. You are. So tell me if I got that totally wrong. You did not get that totally wrong. And, and, and I think that, you know, first of all, I, I would want to acknowledge that, you know, in the United States of America, anybody can sue anybody for anything, right? So when we when we talk about the liability question, there are there's no way to guarantee anything makes you free from liability, whether we're talking about Kubikasa desktops or anything else. However, there are built-in protections. If you look at both the desktop and hybrid forms, by the way, there is a pre-printed limiting condition. And I wrote it down anticipating this question. So I'm gonna read it to you real quickly. The appraiser has relied on data provided by third parties in this appraisal report. After examination of the data and data sources, the appraiser has used only the data he or she considers reliable. The appraiser assumes there are no material om omissions and makes no guarantees express or implied regarding the accuracy of this data. Now, I think that most judges in courtrooms seeing that in the appraisal report um, would tend to uh, be a protection of liability for the appraiser. But again, um, you know, we can't say what any judge or what any court would never find anything liable. That would be a misrepresentation to you. But the, but the forms themselves provide that level of liability protection that is intended to where an appraiser can't be held uh, liable for something they have no control of. Thank you. Those are great responses. And um, I just want to take a pause uh, for anybody who might have joined late. If you do have questions, please um, drop them in the chat. If you're on Facebook Live, uh, you can ask your questions there as well, and we'll get to them at the end. And Mark, just real quick on that, we, we have the chat. We also have the Q&A box where I know some yes, questions sir. are going in there. So, Absolutely. And Jeff and John, you guys are doing great so far. So um, thank you for being so thorough in your answers. Thanks, Mark. Tammy, you want to jump to this one? Yep. So next question is, what do I do if the GLA differs from public records or the MLS? Do I have to use the floor plan GLA? So um, public records are a great resource for general facts about a home. Um, but public records um, is, is subject to the accuracy of the data that was input. Um, you know, in many cases, people haven't been inside a property from a public records GLA standpoint for decades. Um, I know personally, I've gotten several notices from my city asking to come in and see the property. And I just politely decline uh, every time they ask because I'd just rather not have somebody come in and check out my home. So public records as a data source is, is something that we should all kind of be thinking about, like, you know, how recently was this measured? What standards did they use when they measured it? Um, you know, all of that. And, and to speak a bit about MLS as well, that is the square footage information and property data today that's in the MLS absolutely is provided by an interested party. So we need to keep that in mind um, when we think about the accuracy of those, of those both public records and MLS. Um, 
But with that said, um, you know, and, and John, I'll let you speak to speak to this a bit a bit further after I'm done here. Again, via USPAP and your you know freedom and responsibility as an appraiser, you don't have to use the floor plan GLA that was captured um, in a desktop assignment if you have reason to believe that perhaps there's a different data source that's more credible. Um, so you know what we are seeing a lot in the desktops is the floor plan is collected up front um, in the listing process. Um, it's put into the MLS or um, it's collected on demand through some kind of data collection. And the again, for a desktop, the appraiser is not you know, physically in the property or inspecting it. And so I would think of that floor plan and the floor plans GLA that comes with it as an additional data source that you have to now really understand the home to a better degree than you would without it. But again, it's your obligation and your freedom to say, hey, you know what? Um, they missed a room, or I'm not sure I trust these measurements completely being computer generated. So I'm just gonna use the floor plan as a visual aid that helps me understand the functional obsolescence risk that may or may not exist on this property. And instead, I prefer to use public records because in my market, that's something that I'm comfortable with and I know it's well done. Again, that's your freedom and your obligation as an appraiser under use path. Uh, anything you'd add to that, John? Yeah, just that I think that, you know, that we need to keep, we need to keep things in mind historically, right? I mean, I, I, I used to speak at conferences and I'd ask, you know, if 10 different appraisers go out and measure a home, how many different answers will we get? And people would say 11. And so, you know, you have to understand that, that, um, you know, we, as you as an appraiser, you receive a prior appraisal or a sketch that another appraiser did. Do you take that carte blanche and just and, and trust it? You know, I think what the point here is, is there are a lot of different sources and a lot of different ways that properties are measured. Um, I know personally, you know, when, when, when I was actively appraising, I would not I would not consider the public records accurate at all. I would not consider the assessor's data accurate at all because when I would go out and measure properties, it didn't come out that way. You know, there were some significant differences. So, you know, again, as Jeff said, what this comes down to is reliability. You know, some of this kind of relates to, you know, Fannie Mae's initiative with the ANSI standard and, you know, trying to get a uniform base for, for where these, floor plan and GLA calculations can start. But the bottom line is, as an appraiser, you need to use what you deem is the most reliable data sources. And you may end up having to cobble them together from multiple sources to be able to provide what you think is the most reliable data to use in your appraisal. Awesome, thank you guys. Uh, sorry, I'm having a mouse issue. <laughs> you have a, a mouse in your hotel room? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm trying to get to this next question and just not wanting to play well. So let's see. I'm going to pivot and. That looks like we got to the next question, didn't we? Yeah, it went forward. Park. Park. Maybe my screen is frozen. Go ahead, Tammy. Okay, so this next question, how can you ensure Kubikasa is ANSI compliant or aligned with ANSI standards? So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll tackle that. So um, the way Kubikasa works um, is there is a machine learning uh, generated building information model uh, that is derived from the scan. Uh, capture process. And because all of it is data driven and driven by, you know, a consistent uh, computer vision and machine learning model, uh, uh, our very gifted technology team um, can actually program consistent applications of, of standards for what's living area and what's not. And so as we were um, developing the digital GLA version of this product, um, we built into it consistent standards that align to the ANSI alphabet soup. I forget ZN six five seven six five. Thank you. Uh, align, align to that. Now, obviously, uh, if I remember correctly, the way ANSI is written is it's specifically a, a hand measurement uh, methodology that's utilized if you measure from the exterior. 
So we want to be upfront about the fact that obviously if you've used our product, you know, you don't scan from the outside, you scan from the inside. So how we're aligned to ANSI is all of the logic of ANSI from the inside. So how do you treat square footage relative to staircases and stairs? How do you treat um, you know, low ceiling height? How do you treat below grade space? That's what we've aligned to completely. Um, and because our technology does capture from the inside, which really is part of its value and why it's so easy to use, you know, we have uh, essentially at this point built in estimated wall thickness uh, based upon all of our data modeling to estimate what's a typical wall thickness that you could apply to properties. We recognize that some properties have you know, different wall thicknesses than others. This is the solution we have available at this point that we feel is very good accuracy, but we recognize that for the longer term, we're gonna have to build into the potential for people to derive their own wall thicknesses you know, to make those adjustments to the process. And that's something that's on our product roadmap. Uh, but if you think about, again, the process of you know, some, anybody, a homeowner, a third party being able to capture this data, do this scan today, Everything that we've built into the product in the interior space aligns to that ANSI standard uh, that I was just mentioning there. All right, great. So I'm gonna lag, so I'm gonna click this and I hope it'll change. And then Tammy, you can go ahead and read it if you see it. Not changing, Tammy made Not yet. Changing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, here we go. Okay. What is my personal benefit from desktop appraisals? The fees will be reduced. Why should I embrace the change? Can I start on this one, Jeff? Go for it. So, um, first of all, we can't have a comprehensive discussion about fees due to antitrust laws and things like that. Um, I will say this, that, you know, that just like any assignment, I, I can talk about our company, Clear Capital, and I can tell you that any assignment, we will solicit and there will be a fee. And if the appraiser does not like that fee, they can submit a bid for what they believe is a reasonable fee. And the assignment will either be accepted or resolicited, depending on, on, on what our available resources are to perform that assignment. So, but the appraiser is the one, the fees are determined in the marketplace, just like they are you know, with every appraisal assignment. Why, why should you consider desktop appraisals? I think it's because it, the same reason you do anything in business is that you try to diversify your practice. You know, if you want to, if, if you're comfortable, if you really like you know, the driving, to the properties, setting the appointments, driving to the properties, going outside, taking the pictures, doing the interior. If that's really what you're, excites you most, why not keep the majority of your assignments in traditional, but consider other desktop assignments? It does provide a heck of a lot of advantages, as Jeff alluded to, with weather. Um, there are a lot of people that for many reasons aren't as comfortable going out into the field today. Some people have um, you know, talked about things like the pandemic and how that could affect their personal safety. You know, Even though things are trending down now again, there's people who think there could be another pandemic somewhere around the corner. I know, bright and sunny news, right? Um, the other part of that is driving. I mean, you know, if you're paying like we are in California, almost $6 a gallon for gas, um, that impacts your business. So that may be another reason you want to drive a little bit less. Nobody's telling you to give up your practice um, doing traditional full inspections. I suggest you augment it. I suggest you look at it, you consider it, you try it. You might find a good mix. We do have many appraisers that are doing nothing but desktop appraisals. They find that to be the way that they can be most efficient, most effective. They don't have to worry about the things I mentioned or, or safety. You know, we all read in the news about, you know, anywhere you go now, there seems to be potential violence and things like that. So there are a lot of reasons for people to think about augmenting their practice. And if, if it's something that you like, it's something that works for you, you can make that the majority of your practice, or you can have whatever balance you feel comfortable with, whether it be 80% traditional and 20% desktop, whatever makes you comfortable. But I think 
that you're doing yourself a disservice by not trying to diversify your practice and be able to see where you really may um, find beneficial a product mix that is different than what you're used to. Yeah, that was great, John. And and I would add to that, you know, I think in these early days when desktop and hybrid assignments are becoming more commonplace, but are not really, you know, the dominant form of assignment yet, um, it makes sense to start slow and see how you feel. Um, as these things become more common, um, I would share, I guess, some experiences from some of the appraisers we've worked with on desktop and hybrid assignments who've who've had the opportunity in their market to make it their primary source of, of appraisal income. Um, and, and again, I, that's not gonna be true in every market because these, these products are just starting to take off. But for those who really dedicate almost 100% or fully 100% of their time to desktop and hybrid assignments, what they find is they can produce way more work in a day than they can on the traditional, or if they're trying to split time between the two. Um, because you get into a groove of, reviewing data, concluding value, moving on. Um, and by doing the same thing over and over, you really can get a lot more efficient. Um, and I think that's gonna be a greater opportunity for appraisers in the years ahead as these things become more ubiquitous. Um, and more folks are looking for a way to stop um, driving around um, and getting out there and, and prefer just to focus on the analysis component. All right, thanks guys. I'm still frozen, so I'm going to click and Tammy, you can tell me if we move forward. We did move forward and that um, th that was the end of our questions. Um, so I guess we could look to. I'm going to stop sharing and get us back live and then we'll. Um, I think I'm going to. It's important to acknowledge that Kula Casa did not build the Zoom technology. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm so frozen right now. I'm trying to do it. A... So um, we did ahead, get a, Jeff. we did get a decent number of questions uh, popping up in the Q and A and in the chat. Um, so if, if it makes sense, uh, Mark, do you just want me to select some of these and toss them out for John and I to, to answer here? Absolutely. Okay, fantastic. So um, looking through um, some of the questions here, um, and, and we'll answer both questions about Kubica specific, specifically, but also uh, questions about desktops and hybrid assignments, because it seems like we, we have both. Um, First question was, are inspections being performed by anyone? Um, if so, who? Uh, so kind of a general question about these new types of, these new types of products, uh, desktop and hybrid assignments. Um, John, I'll take a first stab at this, but then I uh, wanted to toss it over to you. So for, for the desktop appraisal, the requirement um, is to get a floor plan. Um, and that is something that is really easy enough, especially with the Kubokasa technology, that really anyone can do it. Um, so you'd have people like the homeowner collecting it, the listing agent, or a data collector that you know the lender may uh, or an AMC may contract with for to send a data collector out to go collect, you know, collect the floor plan. Um, for the hybrid appraisal, which has significantly more data required for it. Uh, a lot of photos, a lot of additional data. Um, you know, the way that that happens, and I'm actually going to answer some other questions I've seen on this at the same time. The way that the way that that happens, and the types of data collectors that would be doing those assignments, um, is the lender ultimately is going to be selecting some company to go collect that data. It, in many cases, might be the same AMC who you're working with on the desktop or hybrid assignment or appraisal firm. Um, uh, or somebody that they subcontract with. But ultimately, um, for those types of assignments, every experience I've had um, in that space is that the companies doing those data collections are hiring people who have been thoroughly trained, background checked, and meet really rigorous uh, requirements that the lenders and the GSEs have around um, training standards, um, you know, 
just all sorts of eyeballs are on that process to make sure it's as um, legit as possible. So the the horror story that's often talk, you know, I've heard before when people in the industry talk about hybrids is, well, they're just going to send out random Uber drivers to go collect this data. Um, and my experience has been the exact opposite of that. There's more scrutiny on the certifications and qualifications of a data collector for hybrid than you you could possibly imagine. John, anything you'd add on this? Yeah, I, I think, uh, thanks, Jeff. I, I think that, so number one, in, are inspections being performed? Yeah, they're being performed by appraisers and a whole lot of other people, um, to Jeff's point. Um, you know, most of the AMCs and lenders that are using these do have, as Jeff said, very well-trained, professionally licensed people that, um, that you know, that, for example, licensed real estate agents and brokers where if there was an ethical breach, there's a way to submit a complaint um, to a to an appropriate state board about their behavior or, or et cetera. So there's, there's something to fall back on there. I think it's, it's and I mentioned that some appraisers are doing that. And I think the important thing to distinguish here is that um, when you're talking about the desktop appraisal assignments, the appraiser cannot perform the inspection. And some people say, well, why not? You know, how do, how do I get this information, et cetera? Um, so first of all, with the desktop appraisal assignments, they're not all created equal, right? Uh, desktop appraisal assignments through our company, we provide, as, as Jeff just mentioned, we provide a desktop data collection that has what we believe all the information an appraiser needs to be able to perform that desktop assignment competently and reliably and produce a credible opinion of value. There, I've heard stories from appraisers where a lender says, you know, oh, I want a desktop appraisal and go out and go out and do it. And the appraiser is like, well, how do I do it if I'm supposed to do it from the desktop? Where do I get that information? So keep in mind, not all desktop assignments are created equal. But the thing I wanted to go back to is what I mentioned about an appraiser doing an inspection. It's not that it's prohibited per se, but it is when you use the GSE forms because the GSE forms have a statement, I believe it's number seven, if I recall properly, that says, I have not personally inspected the subject property of this appraisal. So if you as an appraiser went out and did that inspection and then did the desktop appraisal, technically you're signing a false certification. That's the way the GSEs are looking at it. So what do you do? You simply talk to the client and say, we need to change this to a traditional URAR assignment instead of a desktop. So I just wanted to point that out because we have heard some confusion from appraisers on that as well. That's great. Thanks, John. Um, moving on to some of the other questions, uh, some Kubikos for specific questions. Um, when will you lower the price? That's a good question. Uh, <laughs> so um, and the answer to that question is uh, April 25th. So um, historically, Kubikasa has provided one product, um, and that has been kind of our standard marketing floor plan, um, which if you're used to it, has quite a bit of detail in it. So you've got things like fixed furniture, kitchen appliances, all sorts of really cool stuff that helps for marketing purposes, but really isn't required from an appraisal standpoint. Um, so effective April 25th, uh, Kubikasa will be releasing uh, a new product version. So we will now have well, what we call the base product uh, and the plus product. And the base product will be a very simplified appraisal output that meets appraisal requirements um, and will not have all of the same detail and same, of, um, and same level of complexity that you get in more of the marketing floor plan use case that you're, is standard in our product today. Um, and so um, our standard pricing currently, as you all know, is around $35 on our website. Um, in again, uh, April 25th, we will be offering this base version for $21.99, or excuse me, $22.99. And that'll be that, that up simplified appraisal output. The simplified output allows us to more easily work through the, uh, the, the data that we need to, to process and our kind of manual QA process at the end to ensure that there's a high quality output and result. So we've produced that base product with the idea of the appraisal use case in mind of trying to make a more affordable option for the individual appraiser um, and an option that can really scale 
um, and support the very large number of, of, uh, of floor plans that we know are going to be needed to support appraisal modernization efforts. So uh, keep your eyes open for the Kubikasa website and product announcements here uh, later in the month of April. And Jeff, because uh, I've, I've had a couple of appraisers ask me those questions at conferences and such, are we still uh, you know, looking to possibly consider other pricing models like volume models or, or, or like an all you can eat model for a monthly fee and things like that? Are those things we're, we're still th thinking about? Those are things that we want to get to in the future. It's a great question, John. Um, today, the way our process works um, and the reason it works so well and so intuitively is because uh, we do have a human in the loop at the end of the process, reviewing the output, performing QA on it, and making sure it all makes sense. Walls are connected, details are aligned, right? So today there is a there is a per unit production cost for us to fulfill the service, right? Longer term, we're investing big time in a further enhancements to our computer vision, further enhancements to our technology that will reduce, you know, some of that need. And that we believe will open up a lot of new potential business models uh, for us to support different use cases. But right now in the near term, we're really focused on how do we get the cost down for an appraiser? How do we make this more accessible to people um, so that it can be a more common part of their process? But great question. Great. Thanks for asking, answering that. Absolutely. So um, some other questions that are popping up here, let's scroll through. Um, all right, let's just talk about accuracy because there are questions about accuracy. So I have completed over 20 Kubi scans. I have not received accurate results yet. The footprint has not been correct. What is Kuba Casa doing to improve the system? So let's address that head on. The way the technology works is it's collecting uh, data from the accelerometer in your phone uh, and the scan imagery, and it's then processing that combined data set through a very intense advanced computer vision model that does a lot of different things. But one of the things it does is it estimates depth. It estimates distance. Um, and this is incredibly complex development work that's done by people way smarter than me. So I can speak to it at a high level. But what I can say about it is that um, it is very accurate in the sense of being able to get you a very clear picture of the general outline of the property and the square footage associated to it. But there is going to be some small variation from scan to scan because what we're doing is estimating distance from these computer generated models and from the light and for, for LiDAR devices from the LiDAR data that comes from the device. That's very hard technical to problem to solve. Kubikasa has gotten much farther on that problem than many other companies. But if you send two different people to a, to a property to do a scan, you are going to see small variation from scan to scan. Don't want to sugarcoat that. That is the reality. So if you as an appraiser go to a property and measure it with a tape measure, um, every single wall, every single nook, every single cranny, I'm not surprised to hear that you're going to see some small variation in our results from yours. And that's just, that's just the truth, right? Um, if your standard of whether or not you can use this product in your own traditional assignments is that it's down to the millimeter, I wouldn't use our product. Um, and I think you shouldn't use any of these products. If your standard is, and there's other products like ours and they all have this same dynamic, right? We're using depth data, we're using LIDAR to really do advanced measurement estimates. Um, if your standard is, um, I want something that gives me a very reliable, um, credible result that saves me a bunch of time on my traditional assignments, I think we can help you a great deal. Even better, if your standard is I'm doing desktops and hybrids and I wanna get a very clear sense of the property's flow, its functional obsolescence, and a credible result that I can trust a third party to give me, I think we're the perfect solution. Um, but again, if your standard is to the millimeter accuracy, don't trust any of these technologies. Sorry to be like overly blunt about it, but John, what would you add to that? Um, no, I wouldn't add anything, and I, and I, I, I appreciate the, the frankness there. I guess the, the only question I'd have is, do, do we see uh, any enhancement and improvement with the most recent phones with the LiDAR, like the iPhone 13 Pro Max and things like that? Great question. 
Yes. So um, Google phones are really challenging. LiDAR devices are great. Our technology works with every device, but the LiDAR devices continue to get better and better. And the accuracy that we see from the LiDAR and how we incorporate that into our process really improves the model and improves the output. So I think between all the advances we've already made, all the continued investments we're going to make, and the fact that LiDAR devices become more ubiquitous, you're only going to see the accuracy on all these types of technologies continue to, to improve over time. Great, thanks. All right. So um, let's look at some of these other questions. Um, after the scan is uploaded, what is the turn time for the appraiser to receive the final product? Uh, so for Kubacasa, our standard turn time guarantee, uh, or close to pretty dang close to guarantee, unless you mess something up with the scan, is 24 hours. But typically, um, that's at that's basically saying like that's our bar for like that's the worst you can expect from us, and something really went wrong. Uh, the reality for our delivery times is we're typically between you know six to 12 hours at this particular point, um, and we are going to be offering with that April 25th rollout. Um, a six hour rush option. Um, so essentially, if you choose to use this in your process, you can request that six hour rush for an additional fee to make sure that you're expedited to the front of the line and that we, we produce that as quickly as possible. Uh, can appraisers use Kubacasa for traditional appraisals for themselves when there is a, a difficult floor plan instead of physically measuring or is it only available for desktops? You, de you definitely can. Um, and we actually, we see a growing number of appraisers utilizing Kubacasa on traditional assignments. Um, and I think the fact that you referenced a difficult floor plan uh, is, is pretty spot on. You can use that on any assignment. What we hear from appraisers candidly is if I've got a 1500 square foot rectangle, I probably don't need it. Okay, that's fine. Um, but if I've got the 5,000 square foot one with crazy angles, crazy nooks and crannies, um, all sorts of complexity that would take you in some cases two to three hours to sketch. Um, people are very often using our product for those because we can get them to be extremely accurate um, and typically save you a very significant amount of time uh, on the more complex properties. John, anything you'd add to Kubikos on traditional assignments? I would just underscore what, exactly what you said. I mean, you know, there are a lot of appraisers out there that say, boy, you know, I've got, I've got a a 1200 square foot house that's a rectangle with one cut out for the front door how hard can this be i'm, I'm just going to do it and and that is that is a fact but i will also say there's pl probably plenty of people listening to us right now who have been in the business and pull up to that house and say oh no and they see round walls and they see diagonal walls and they see you know basement overhangs they see they see all sorts of things that signal nightmare to me in terms of the sketch and the inspection process and we all know how if we if, it, if there's a surprise and none of us like surprises when we go out to an appraisal that can ruin your entire day with other appointments you may have scheduled or other things so for those instances boy it would it would really be nice to be able to pull out your phone and be able to do a, a scan on a property like that yep yep well put um Okay, more questions. Uh, questions about exterior wall thickness um, and condos. So great question. So uh, question is, uh, uh, how do we, essentially I see multiple questions asking, how do we use this on, on condos or townhouses where you know, you're supposed to measure from the inside? It's a great point. Um, and that's one of the things we are developing um, is essentially the ability to define property type Looks like Model. Jeff Rose there. Oh, there he is. He's back. He's back. back. Yes. Sorry. No. Uh, it's telling me my internet connection is unstable. Can you hear me? Yes. We can. All right. Uh, I'm going to turn my video off for a second. Hopefully, just make sure that, that that works. You guys can hear me still? We can. Okay, great. So, yeah, we, we are building that into our roadmap. Um, that's been a common request. The idea of being able to utilize uh, to basically define your property type, and then that would change how the square footage was derived uh, for for a condo or a townhome to pull it from from the interior. So that's on our roadmap. We don't have a release date on that yet, um, but uh, it's something we've heard loud and clear. Um, 
the first version of digital GLA that we built, we built for single family because that's where the GSC desktops and hybrids were going to be. And that's where they are. And that's where we saw our most, you know, kind of urgent product application. But we know that we really need to add in that property type functionality. And so that's that's definitely something we've heard from the market loud and clear. And while we're on the subject of condos, real quickly, just a reminder that the ENCZ 765 standard does not apply to condos. So um, you know, just, just be aware you if you're performing a condo appraisal, you probably don't want to say in there that you have measured it in compliance with ANSI standards because there, there there are none for condos. Yep. Well put. Um, some questions about how to put it into your report. I've seen some of those, uh, seen some of those come through. Um, so today, um, uh, with the current product that we have, if you did a scan or you got a scan from somebody, uh, you're receiving it just an image of the of the GLA floor plan. And then we have uh, a separate area where we put the GLA calculation text. Um, and, and so that's, that's today. Um, basically, essentially, you could uh, download the image, uh, put it into your report as an addendum, then you can copy the, the GLA calculation data um, and paste that into your report in a text field. That is not the right way to do this long term. So actually, as part of that release on April 25th that I just mentioned, uh, we're also releasing a new PDF output that essentially will have the, the GLA image and all the calculations as a single kind of multi-page PDF output with one floor per page. So what that'll give you the ability to do is just download that single file, and then you can upload that single file uh, into your appraisal report with one click through any of the major software providers, you know, so Bradford, Alamode, uh, ACI as, a, as an addendum. Um, and you wouldn't have to do any separate uh, copy and pasting of the GLA calculations. Answer that question. Um, other questions. John, we need one for you. I'm ready. Uh, let's see here. They're all about Kuba Casa. Nobody wants to ask you about appraisal policy. My appraiser kicks are smart out there. <laughs> uh, let's see here. There's a question that just popped up in the chat Yeah. Um, from Samuel says, will original photos still be required for comparable photos on desktop assignments or will MLS photos be acceptable in order to make these truly desktop? Yes, the GSEs do not require original photos on the comparables. They do allow MLS photos. Um, you, you, again, to exactly your point, Samuel, it wouldn't be a desktop if you were expected to go out and take pictures of the comparables or to take a rear photo of the subject property, for example. So yes, uh, they are, they do allow MLS photos for the comps. Okay, great. Uh, does Kubikasa technology include the ANSI required declarations when those declarations are applicable or is that a manual process uh, for the appraiser? So yeah, we, we do not, uh, we really don't wanna get involved in the process of defining what language appraisers put into their appraisal report. Um, you know, we're really focused upon providing our service and our technology in a way that that adds value for the for the appraiser. Um, so uh, Kubikasa doesn't have like specific language we require or recommend to put into a report. Um, and so, John, is there anything you'd add to this uh, from your perspective? Yeah, thanks, Jeff. There's a, there's a lot of confusion around this. And, and I will say this, that, um, you know, while I can't speak for every AMC or lender out there, uh, what we look for is what's called, what's required by uh, in ANSI, the statement of square footage, of finished square footage. And that can be as simple as saying, I measured this property following ANSI standards and the total square feet is this, or um, I used 
I used ANSI in calculating the GLA on this property. And it can be that simple. Um, when some of the people look at the examples in ANSI, and I don't want to turn this into an ANSI class, but when they look at some of the examples of those declarations, they're just that, they're examples. They're not required. And I also would say it's important to understand it's not just ANSI that's requiring this, it's GSEs and lender overlays that may require something additional. So if we tell you we, you need to say the I calculated square footage using GLA, uh, the GLA using ANSI, while ANSI may not just flat out say that, the GSEs are, and the lenders are requiring that. So just be aware of that. But it doesn't need to be a big complex declaration. It can be something as simple as what I just said. Fantastic. Okay. Um, how does the technology work with round walls? Um, is a question here. And then maybe this will be our, our last one here so we can, we can wrap this up. Um, so Kubacasa's technology does work with odd shaped walls. Uh, so essentially, um, and that's what I was referencing before about complex properties. We've tested this thing on some pretty crazy properties, um, including horse barns, ranches uh, in the middle of the Arizona desert. Um, we've had it, uh, it used on many really complex assignments with, with crazy shapes. And we've actually posted, you know, uh, with permission, some of those on our on our LinkedIn page for folks to see it used on a really complex property. It will work it, with rounded walls, with with complex angles, with odd features. Uh, the way the technology works is that it doesn't need right angles or square ninety degree, you know, flush flush structures to produce an output. So you can confidently use this on on even crazy assignments. So I think we're kind of right at time here. Um, we are, and thank you for filling in, Jeff. I appreciate it. A little technical difficulties. Um, and we do have a number of questions that were not answered. Um, and I think what would be good is if we um, compile a list and provide those answers and we can kick those back out if you guys are good with that. Absolutely. Yep, that sounds great. And I, I do see some comments in here for some folks who thought that this was going to be more of a like they would be on audio and they'd be giving us feedback on the product. Um, that and apologize if folks thought that's what we were planning for here. The Zoom setup really and 300 people being on the call doesn't really support that very well. But what I'd like to shout out our Kubacasa customer support team to do is maybe take down some of these names of folks who were wanting to do that, um, and and maybe we can schedule one on one calls. Um, there's so. It, if I could just ask the Kubacasa team to maybe take a look at that. I think we've got some folks who want to get like super in the weeds um, and provide product feedback. And I want to make sure we have a, another, a, another method for us to do that. Absolutely. That's great, Jeff. And the, and the one thing I would want to add there is you know, I saw a couple of comments. We do want that feedback. We do want that. We do want to make improvements. We do want to know where your pain points are. We also want to know your successes. I saw in the chat, somebody just, said they measured a 12,000 square foot mansion and it was incredible, the results. So we don't wanna just hear the good, we wanna hear what, what you need as well. So I think that's, that's great. I also would be remiss not to thank Mark and Tammy, Anastasia and the others for, uh, for helping set this up. Thank you all so much. Thank you. And um, we will, uh, another, a question was asked if we will have a recording of this, this will be recorded and we will put it on our YouTube channel uh, so you can, Rewatch it, or if you know someone that wasn't able to attend, they'll be able to watch it as well. And we do have some resources that I know Anastasia is putting into the, uh, the chat as well. Um, some great resources that will answer some of the additional questions around appraisals. And again, we will get a lot of the, um, the answers to the questions that have been asked that we weren't able to get to, and we will uh, share that out to all of the participants as well. So Jeff and John, I know it's been um, you know a tough day with travel and some different things and conferences, but um, thank you so much for your participation. Thank you so much for answering questions, uh, providing great resources. I love hearing you both talk about it because um, I learn something every time about appraisal. So um, hopefully everybody learned as well. And um, again, thank you for your time. Thanks, thank Mark you. and Tammy. Thanks, John, and thank thanks everybody. Thank you so much. All right, Bye, take everyone. care. Have a great day.